All right, we're going to talk about some different uh, styles of box traps to think about capturing wildlife and um, specifically here thinking about capturing smaller mammals. So the, the first trap I've got is a, uh, a small box trap that you would use. I mean, you can see the, how the size relative to my hand. Um, this would be something for like a fox squirrel. Uh, or gray squirrel depending on where you are in the country um, but it really maybe maybe a rabbit uh, but we're we're talking about smaller animals and so these box traps are sized based on the, the size of the animal that you're catching and we're gonna work with one for even smaller mammals in a second but these box traps go up to sizes used um, you know th th that are pretty much this style of, of wire that you can see through uh, up to sizes that you could maybe catch a coyote or a, a fox in for sure um, but then they're modified you can make them out of uh, plywood for catching deer uh, with a similar design all the way up to a trap made out of they call them culvert traps culvert traps that are made to catch like a uh, bear black bear in and they're made from pipes that are literally like the culvert that goes underneath the road uh, welded so this this big metal pipe um, same thing but they've they've welded on an end and replaced the trap here with a with a very substantial tube that a bear can't break out of and then they'll have a door on the other end that operates just like this one but they all have uh, some pretty similar parts to them a couple of things that i just want to mention from the get-go here when we're capturing live animals um, vertebrate animals we need to make sure that both of our our class um, activity and our research activities are approved by the college or university institutional animal care and use committee and our class is so and specifically um, it includes this in the certification that you have to list what species you're going to capture and um, that's a process that as a researcher or instructor you can go through as a participant researcher or student there's a general training that um, is an hour long or there's an online session that you can uh, attend through your animal care and use group and that provides you with background information on why we um, Go through this process and, and some basics but those are those are really important uh, so that we think about the ethical way that we're uh, setting up our experiments and our training as we learn to use these and also how we're treating the animals that we capture and we make sure we have a plan for effectively capturing them the second thing is uh, this is an old sign that's uh, stuck on this one in Nebraska and rules will vary by state but in Nebraska you're required on any trap that you put out for for research for class whatever um, the the lead PI instructor is required to have their driver's license number uh, attached to the trap and that's just so that if somebody stumbles on the trap calls the police and the police uh, get called to these things more often than you might think um, so we need to think about how our how our trapping is going to be perceived by the public as we're doing these exercises but um, that way they can figure out who is responsible for for the trapping um, that the, for the trap that they found so so that's just a and I didn't uh, write mine on here uh, this one hasn't been used for a long time so the old one is faded uh, but I didn't want everybody to know my driver's license number so so I didn't do that all right so I cuck and labeling traps if necessary with an ID um, the parts of a trap usually one end of the trap is just completely solid and can't be uh, open there's a treadle that's going to be very important for the animal coming into the trap coming towards some kind of bait that's put at the back of the trap in this case we might put a stick that's been dipped in peanut butter, for example, and hang that down through the wire here so that a squirrel has to come back through that uh, trap 
uh, to get to that um, so that they can't reach it from the sides that they have to come through the trap itself. They'll step on the treadle and they'll release the trap door that will capture them. This door on this particular design has a couple parts. Um, there's, a, there's a folding part here that will be the part that keeps the door from opening, okay? And then there's the main door. As I bring this up, I wanna make sure I show you. Let me put my finger underneath it so you can make sure we see it. There is a really important part here. There's a little roller device that's on one of these threads. And that roller device is, if we bring the trap door all the way open, and the wire connected, the little trip wire here connected to our treadle has a little hook on it. I think you can see that. And I'm gonna bring that hook right underneath that roller. Let me see if I can get it up so we can see that in focus. Okay, so that hook goes right underneath that roller. Now the trap is set, and if I come down, insert my hand, and hit that, now the trap has been released, and my hand is caught. All right, so that's how that particular live trap works. A Sherman trap is a smaller design with pretty much the same um, idea. We've got, instead of wire, we've got a, a more solid. This one happens to have some holes in the side for ventilation. Uh, might not be the greatest thing to use in the winter time. Um, but we've got a, uh, a solid back side and we've got a side with a trap door. Um, if we look inside there, there is a treadle in the middle and I could uh, put something in the back. Uh, some people use bird seed that tends to get really dirty and you have to shake them out of these traps. Um, I like uh, a friend of mine, a uh, mammologist told me about making a little uh, packet of peanut butter with a uh, waxed paper. And so uh, you make a little sandwich with the waxed paper uh, with the peanut butter inside. It still smells, the animals can nibble on it while it gets in there, but you throw that little packet all the way at the back and when you're done, the packet just comes out and there won't be very much peanut butter to clean up off your trap. But the animals come in, they go over that treadle, they hit the treadle, and, um, and will trip this front door to pop up. Now, one thing that you can see in here is that there is a little catch. And so we've got our door and there's a little catch on it. And this little catch is really important. It's gonna be hard for me to show this on the camera. But with your finger, if you reach in with a couple fingers, you can act, this is aluminum, and you can actually push on that catch. Uh, and you can push it so far, try to see if I can do that, that the door won't catch anymore. All right, so I've done that now. I've pushed that catch so far back that this door is not catching. As I put it down. So if you get a, if you're uh, given a trap that has this problem, the way you solve that is to reach in and pull that. I usually use two fingers, pull that back just until it barely catches. Because you also don't want it, like I'm going to pull it too far here. Okay, you can pull that so far, you can't really tell now, but if you bang on the bottom of this trap, that door should come up. So that door should be coming up if I'm banging on the bottom of this trap. Okay, that kind of mimics somebody stepping on that. Right now, I've got this too tight, and if I were to reach in with a stick or something, there's no way that that treadle is going to release this door. So if I push that back just a little bit, nope, I haven't got there yet. This is a relatively new trap, and that's a stiff little catch. course on video now I'm not gonna but this is what you have to go through right this is this is the process I really cranked it down
Okay. Okay. Now I've got it. So it's catch. It's it's <laughs> the catch is caught. Put it down and make sure when it's set that the door's still open. Okay. And then I would leave it like that in the field. The animal would come in. Doop 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 doop. doop. They would walk over it and trip it. So that's how I check it. Just a little tip there is if you bang on the bottom, that should fly up every time. And that's how two styles of box traps work. Again, this one we call a Sherman trap, um, and, a, and that's a very common name for these ones. This would be for like a little paramiscus uh, rodent. Uh, mice, voles, shrews, those sorts of things that we'd be catching in this uh, size of trap. All right, thanks.